from in Hollywood. It's the Tom Micah Show. Oh my God! Oh, here I go! Oh, and now, and now, here he is, Tom Micah. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Micah Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues. You really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Right down our toll free telephone number. You're gonna need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 866. Here we are on the radio. This is fun, right? <laughs> just, I stand here. I understand how I make my living. I stand here. I blab into a microphone. It goes to the transmitter. Right? You are assaulted by this in the afternoon as you head home, and then some guy in New York mails me a check with a lot of zeros on it every two weeks. This is fantastic. And, and you want to know something? I'm going to tell you something else. We just got the highest ratings we've had since Howard Stern retired from broadcast radio. The highest. Ratings came out today. We have the highest ratings we have had in all that time. I mean, the ratings are huge. You know, having Howard Stern in the morning is a big help to any broadcaster. And many guys uh, made their living by having Howard in the morning and they were on in the afternoon. And I was one of them. When Howard was gone, we had to uh, build it back up again. And God damn it, we did it. We built it up again. Our numbers are approximately equal to what they were when Howard was on in the morning. And Howard's not there. It, it's fantastic. God damn it. You want to know the best part about it? During the summer rating period, I was either on vacation or on the road somewhere for the for the majority of it. While I was in Tuscany having a $2,500 dinner, while I was on the beach at Biarritz, while I was touring around Rome and Paris and San Sebastian, Florence and Siena, those tapes were playing back here, back home, and uh, guess what? <laughs> they got the best ratings we ever got. Uh, certainly the best rate we've had in uh, almost two years. Spectacular. I think I'm making this up. I'm not. Congratulations to our station in L.A., 97.1, KLSX. So Cal's FM Talk Station. Look at that. Huge. And congrats to Adam and Danny in the morning. We're doing really well. They also had the best numbers they've ever had. Had Frosty, Heidi, and Frank do the midday show. They continue to do well. And, uh, of course, our show doing really well. It's fantastic. Absolutely. Now, if you want to know how Brian Whitman is doing, I'm going, to say, I'm going to save the surprise. You can call Brian yourself tonight and ask him to read you these numbers. You can ask him. He will read them to you tonight. I don't want to spoil the surprise. You call Brian. Was Brian here this summer? I don't know. But you, you call Brian tonight. You ask him what the numbers were. I've got the numbers here, but really it's not my place. I'm going to let him handle it. That's it. That is if he shows up tonight. We'll see. Much to his credit, he showed up yesterday at the uh, big Raiders event. At Camacho, good thing we shined a spotlight on that, or he would have called in sick. He would have. But he showed up, which was great. 
Good to see Brian yesterday. Good to see Tim. Good to see John and Jeff. Good to see Frosty Honey and Frank. Adam and Danny. Everybody at one place at one time. It was spectacular. It was absolutely great. Leo Quinones was up on stage there. Raiders got their butts handed to them, but hey, we had fun. It was good. But yeah, this is this is fun. By the way, I, I'm sure Brian is not hearing a word I'm saying because he does not listen to our show in the afternoon. He said that on the air the other day. So I'm sure he's not hearing me tell you that if you want to know what the ratings are, don't call me. Call Brian Whitman tonight at 8 o'clock. Find out what his ratings are. Ask him. He'll tell you. It's coming up tonight. It'll be wrong for me to read these on the air. I'm going to I'm gonna let him share the news with you. Tonight at 8. I'm sure this will be topic A. <laughs> you know, sometimes people open a can of worms, and you know what? They open the wrong can. Because sometimes there's a cobra in that can. You start playing with fire, and you do get burned. <laughs> I would say somebody should call a truce sometime soon. But I really got nothing, you know, I got nothing bad to say about Brian. You know, I, like I say, ask him about the ratings tonight at 8. Take that to the HR department. <laughs> anyway, thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio with huge numbers in the afternoon. You know what happens? I, I pitch a tent when the numbers come out like that. Are you kidding me? Feeling my oats. Feels good. So, uh, you know, I haven't had a chance. And I, here's the deal. When Howard left, I, I just want to be honest with you about this because I, I, I like being honest about this stuff. I do like sharing a little bit of this because I know people are interested. You know, when Howard left, we knew that we were going to have some uh, tough months. That when Howard walked away from the radio station here in Los Angeles, and of course he also walked away in Dallas and uh, walked away in a bunch of other cities where our show was heard, um, we decided to just keep doing the show we do and to remain um, humble and not to uh, make any promises we couldn't deliver. And uh, I'll be honest with you, the whole radio station in L.A., um, I did see a little bit of erosion, in some cases a lot of erosion. And in our own case, uh, you know, we did okay. We did pretty well, but we didn't do what we had done when Howard was here. And uh, it was my belief that uh, during that period of time, you know, I was always honest with you. If you asked me about it, I would tell you. But other than that, we didn't get into it. We just kept punching away and we kept doing the show. And how nice is it to see uh, how Howard's been gone well, in, in ratings terms, he's been gone about 19, 20 months. And uh, how great to see that uh, uh, with our own show and with the addition of Adam and then Danny and the morning here in Los Angeles, that uh, our numbers in the afternoon are back where they were. But we did take a hit for a while. And uh, I'm so thrilled that so many of you did hang in with us. But it's so cool that, you know, you can tune in in the morning and the afternoon and hear, you know, a good show, which is great. It helps us a lot. And uh, we're thrilled that uh, everything's going. It's, it's running on all cylinders now. Huge numbers. I mean, huge numbers, especially in our target demographic of men. Uh, it's pretty outrageous how well we're doing here. And uh, it's not just us. It's, uh, you know, Adam and Danny have shown big increases in the morning. And, uh, you know, we have gone up now uh, over the past year. We are up uh, about 20%, a little more than that, which is fantastic. And we are uh, pretty much back where we were. So my thanks to you for uh, standing with us and staying with us and in many cases coming back to us after sampling around. And we know many of you did. 
We know it. It's my job to keep putting on a great show. And, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of people who are in this business who they see the numbers go down or they run around like their pants are on fire. We didn't do that. We just kept doing the show. There are a lot of people, I'm going to be honest with you, a lot of people after Howard Stern left, people are saying, oh, my God, the end is near. They did. And I said in January of 2006, and I'm saying now, that, uh, yes, there'll be a period where people will sample other radio stations, they'll try other things, but if we keep doing what we do well, people will come back, they will support us, we just have to work harder at making great radio every day. And I think we've done that. So congratulations to my fellow staff members here in Los Angeles. This is our first year being employed by CBS Radio. We're very excited about that. And uh, congratulations uh, to Adam and Danny and to Frosty, Hottie, and Frank and uh, to Bob Moore and Jack Silver at uh, 97.1 KLSX. And our thanks to you for pitching in. So um, I do this once in a while, and I will give you an opportunity this hour to talk. I don't like to do it too much because it, it becomes too inside. But I talk about the show. Talk about... Um, you know, what has happened, how we have evolved, how things have uh, have continued on the uptrend here. Tell us why you keep listening or why you listen more. I'd love to hear all about it. I will give you this opportunity to do this right now. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. We'll break it down for him. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. You are on top of your game, my friend. On top of your game. Thank you. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. I'm on 800 500 Tom. All right, let's go to Ryan, listening to our stream from Sacramento on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how's it going? Great. All right, how you doing there? How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm listening to you from Sacramento, and uh, I've uh, been listening to your website now, your webcast there, for about a few months now. Great. Yeah, and uh, I noticed that one show you guys did on, a, it was on a Friday, where it had a bunch of different, you were just talking about it, it had a bunch of different uh, uh, hosts in there, um, Danny and, and uh, Adam and all them, but I didn't see Teresa. Um, I was just wondering if you and Teresa had any type of issues or... Because uh, I know you like Heidi. I'm just trying to figure out. No, it's happens. just that Teresa is not billed in the um, Adam Carolla show. It's the Adam Carolla show. Oh, okay. With Danny Bonaduce. I mean, oh, okay, okay. I was Teresa's just on the show, but she's not billed, which is not unusual for sidekicks on morning shows. Oh, okay, okay, cool. Hey, can you take me out with? Uh, I mean, kind of tricky here on your on your uh, on your guy there. I'm looking for uh, a, a bong hit, a bed squeak, and running feet. A bong hit, a big squeak, and a, and running feet. Yeah, we could do that. <coughs> oh. 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 It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here comes Matt... On the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hi. Hi. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, people call in all the time and they, uh, they complain that you're a misogynist, that you're sexist or materialist, but nobody has ever called this a bad radio show because it's not. Well, the reason they know so much about what I'm talking about is because they keep listening. Right, right. Well, I just wanted to say that it's, I think it's the most compelling uh, four hours of radio in the country. Thank you for that. And uh, can you take me out Compton style? You bet I could take you out Compton style. The man from Sacramento wants to be taken out Compton style. There you go. Biatch. Oh, the Alaska was from Sacramento. This guy was from L.A. That happens. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Alex on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Big Tom. Hello. How are you, my brother? Doing great, Alex. Good to see you again, or not see you, but talk to you. This is the second time I've talked to you. I just want to congratulate you on the the great show that you're putting on there at 97.1. You know, the reason you're so successful is because you're consistent. You're putting out entertain, entertaining material that people like, that people can relate to. And these people that call up and try to tell you otherwise, they just know that they're just the ones that you're talking about. 
That's exactly right. I had to think about it for a second, but you're right. I just want to say thank you for putting on a great show. I listen to you every day. I listen to all the other shows and tell Conway Whitman they can go suck it. <laughs> I think you just did. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Nate on the Tom Likas show. Numbers came Hello. out today and we're doing huge. Hello. Hello, Father. Son, how are you? Good. I just want to say congratulations. The ratings are great. You guys deserve them. You guys don't need Howard Stern. He, you know, great show from uh, Adam Carolla, Danny Bonaduce, Fadi Adi, Fadi Hux, uh, Frosty and Frank, and the man, the father of it all, Tom Likas. Thank you very much, sir. Take me out with the bong rip. All right, Nate. Here you go. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Here comes John. I'm answering questions about the show, which we do once in a while. Just once in a while. Hello. Hey, Tom. Uh, you know, first of all, misogynists always thought that was an expert back rubber that would give a happy ending to me. Uh, you know, <laughs> so I, I had no idea that's what uh, other people thought it was, but that's what I always thought it was. Um, hey, my question on uh, your show, and congratulations, you're always in a better mood when you get to talk ratings. Uh, is San Diego in South Orange County, sometimes we'd have to pick you up on that station, and all of a sudden it disappeared to more music that they have down there. Uh, what happened exactly down there? Uh, what happened down there, um, it was a radio station that was constantly in transition the whole time we were on the air. Um, in fact, uh, the, uh, the Corolla show and our show were the only two shows that were consistently on the air. Everything else kept changing. And we had the misfortune for the last six or eight months we were on the air to follow the uh, Dennis Miller radio show, which, you know, I mean, I you know I'm glad everybody makes a living, but that show is That's the same format. It just isn't what we do, and does not is not compatible with what we do. Exactly. You know, when when a show starts and it goes coming up, Congressman Blow, Joe Blow is going to talk about the Republican politics, and then uh, former Congressman Newt Gingrich will come up after that, and he'll be talking, and then we had to follow that. Yeah, I understand. Politics and sex, I guess. Well, they they do mix, but not they're not. I will tell them. you that the music that replaced us there <laughs> is doing no better than we were, and probably paying more in royalty fees and all that. So, hey, uh, Tom, I got a favor. I don't know if you can do it yet, but can you take me out Santa Clarita tunnel style? Santa Clarita tunnel style. I, I'm a I sicko. I, you're a sicko. I don't even think we have anything like that. I don't think so. Ooh wee. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's JP on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, how you doing? Love your show. Great show. Always entertaining. Got a question. Do you think ever uh, Jimmy Kimmel might join Adam for a talk show, like a dual show with them? I don't know what Jimmy Kimmel will do. Jimmy doesn't keep me clued in on what he's doing. Uh, just love your show. You always got a great entertaining show, and keep up the good work. I'm glad on your rings, and can you take me out old school style? Of course I can. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Don on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Don. Yeah, so uh, how are radio ratings measured? Well, I'm really not allowed to talk about that, and there's a reason, and I will be honest with you about what the reason is, uh, because to get into that could in some way influence the outcome, which I don't want to do. Hmm. Okay. So well, you uh, you might contact uh, you know the con Dean will tell you the name off the air. You might contact the company that does that and ask them directly. But we don't talk about it because we don't want to do anything to influence the results. Well, like a Nielsen kind of company. Yes, like that. Hmm. Huh. But how how would I? But not them. So how would I find out? Well, I just told you I, when we're done. Oh, which gotcha. is seconds from now. I'm going to put you on hold, and Dean will tell you the name of the company, and you can contact them, and you can ask them that question. But to answer the question on the air, in my view, uh, could in some way influence positively or negatively the outcome, and I don't want to do that. That's fair. Um, I just want to tell you, you do a great show, and I'm a fairly regular listener. I enjoy it. Um, 
could you take me out super explosive, uh, blow me up if you got something like that? You mean Otherwise, like multiple bombs? Um, why not? Otherwise, just take me out old school. Well, let's see what we got here. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Jason on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? Great. Hey, Tom, I wanted to say it was nice seeing you yesterday in the, like, kiss shaking the you-know-what right in front of you. That was nice. That was fun. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> I had a quick question. Um, I wanted to know how the whole, uh, uh, the Flash Friday thing came about in the history, you know, how it all started. Oh, my goodness. I've answered this question 40,000 times, but... Yeah, how many of you listen? I'm sorry about oh, that. Oh, okay. Well, it didn't start out as uh, people showing their breasts. It started out as... It, it began when I was a little kid. There was a guy on the radio named Gene Shepard. He was on in New York. I grew up in New York. Gene Shepard is, is a voice you might have heard or a name you might know. Have you ever seen a movie shown every year at Christmas time? You'll be seeing it in the next few weeks. Yeah, uh, there was a little kid with the rifle, right? Right. He was okay. the voice of that movie. All right. And that movie is based on four different stories he told on the radio when I was a kid. Okay. And uh, he didn't take phone calls. It was a 45-minute show where every night he would talk about politics or tell a story about his childhood. He was a storyteller, primarily. Right. And later he wrote the stories down. Uh, they appeared in places like Playboy and Car and Driver, and eventually he did a compilation of them and made uh, a book out of it. And then there were several more books. And uh, four of those stories became the movie A Christmas Story. When I was a kid, uh, Gene Shepard said on the radio that he didn't believe in the ratings because he had very low ratings. And he said he aimed to prove that the ratings were a sham. And so what he said he was going to do is he, he, he was going to have everybody in New York City, where people live primarily in apartments, turn the lights on in their apartment <laughs> and start flashing them on and off. So you would see who the fans were? You could look out the window and see where his listeners were. <laughs> And, of course, everybody who called in reported that they saw all these lights going on and off, which proved his point. Flash ahead to 1998. I'm on the air in Los Angeles. And I'm thinking about the freeway traffic. And at the time, I was doing the show from a studio that was right off the 10 freeway. And um, I had this idea. I suggested that people who are listening turn their headlights on so we would know who the other listeners are. That was it. And after that, the goods get on flashing, huh? No, a listener called in that day and said, well, we should get a reward for that. Like, if we flash our headlights, women should flash us their boobs. Oh, man. And I told the caller, I said, that's highly unlikely that you're going to get flashed. And then soon after that, people called in and reported seeing flashing. And, and it, it got out of control after that. Oh, man, well, I got to thank you for that. It makes my, you know, Friday... Drives home, uh, you know, a bit better. <laughs> That's the deal. Hey, Tom, uh, can you take me out of Lindsay with uh, Compton? Take you out what? Oh, Lindsay, Lin Lin Lindsay Lowen and, and the Compton cell. Yes. Yeah. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Here comes Chris on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you, Dad? Great, son. You know what? That's the first. I want to tell you, Dad, the three best things I really, really like about your show. Uh, I, it's my drive home every day. And the first thing is, Dad, is you've given me the fatherly advice that I truly needed from my original father. Uh, second advice is I really love how you put the women in their place and decide, you know, this is your world. They better live in it. And lastly, Tom, every time I hear the city Portland, I think of of my dad saying Portland, the third white, the other white meat. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you ever been to Portland? You know what? I actually have gone through Portland. I've never I had a chance to stop. So I, I'm I'm curious to hear to hear how are, are the women really that fat and fugly? Yeah, all I'm going to say to you is it is not an accident. <laughs> that, that Portland has the most strip clubs per capita of any major U.S. city. You've got to be kidding me. That's true. It is. Now, and, and are the women just that fat and fugly in the strip joints? Well, um, but put it this way. Outside the strip joints, there's a lot of fat and fuglies. 
Got it. So the guys need to go to strip joints to see something that is reasonably attractive. <laughs> oh, I got you. I got you. You get the idea. I do, man. I, Tom, again, can you take me? Uh, I love you, man, by the way. Uh, can you take me out Kobe African style? Yes, I can. Here you go, Chris. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Tom Likas. So you're just looking for sex. Of course. You must be a new listener. You must be kidding. You think that's what makes people happy? That's what, I'll tell you what, that's what makes men happy. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM Here's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. And here we are on the eve of, uh, well, the eve on the day of the, the ratings coming out here in Los Angeles. And we have, um, we have recovered the audience. Whatever audience we lost after Howard Stern left, we are back where we were. It's fantastic. It's great news for us, and our thanks to you for making that happen. And those of you who stuck with us all along, thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Ron on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom. Good to hear from you. Did I call you? I thought you <laughs> called me. That's right. I did call you. Um, I heard you say something about the ratings, and I just wanted to let you know... Uh, I never really liked Howard. In fact, I stopped listening to Free FM when I when he came on, and then uh, about a year ago, I started listening to you, and I've been pretty much uh, listening to you ever since. I love that. Thank you. You're welcome. Absolutely, and uh, keep up the good work, Ron. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Uh, and by the way, we're talking to people who have questions about the show at an opportune time, like a day when the Rays came out and uh, when we did really well. Nate, hello. Yeah. Hi, Tom. How you doing? Great. A pleasure to talk with you today. I'm sure. I'll ask you a question. Um, why do you you're not allowed to say where you're, which uh, um, you know, where you're broadcasting from, and uh, what studio you're working for? Well, if I were allowed to say it, I would answer that question, but I'm not. Uh, the studio, the, the movie studio we broadcast from, sent a cease and desist letter to CBS Radio and asked us to stop mentioning their name on the air. Why is that? Uh, but they have their own reasons for it, but uh, they uh, say it's a violation of our lease if I uh, use their name. And why you're not allowed to say the location? I have said the location. Well, it's, sometimes you say, like, you're, you are going to say, like, from a high location. You won't say, like, where it's from. I can't tell you that. Uh-huh. It's, ho it's, ho it's Hollywood, and it's a movie studio. Right, okay. Well, I got to say, Tom, you're the most entertaining thing on radio today. And I really, it's a pleasure listening to you, but I'll tell you something. I would never take advice from you, and I'll tell you why. Because... Because your wife told you not to? No, actually, I'm not married. I'm actually 24. The your girlfriend told, told you not to? You it's because I, I feel it's it's kind of contradicts what, if I would take a life decision uh, from you, take, you know, take advice... Um, you know, you, whatever your answer is going to be, it's going to be about your paycheck, about the ratings that you're going to get. If you don't care about my life and what I'm going to decide in my life, you care about how your ratings are going to be and how the right. But one of the, understand that one of the ways I get ratings is by being relatable and by talking about people, things people care about, and also by being, uh, if not right about every issue, uh, in agreement with most of the listeners. Well, yeah, that's true, but I think so. Your answers have to do with your paycheck, and you care more about how the everything. Are by the now. way, what every every talk radio talk show, really every radio that. show, every TV show, anyone who gives advice on radio and TV, it's the same deal. I just wear it on my sleeve and remind you about it. Well, that's why I won't get any advice from any radio station or TV. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. They don't really care. It's about their ratings. They, it's not really, why would I take a life decision, you know, for, from a life decision? Well, keep in mind also, though, that in books, many times people put, uh, tell you you can become a millionaire with no money down and because it sells books. Exactly. You are 100 percent. Right, you're 100 percent right. Nobody can become a nobody. Nobody can become nobody can become a millionaire with no money down. Okay, you can't. Can't be done. Well, you you can't. That's true. It's all about sales. But I'm but I'm happy that you actually acknowledge that and you you're saying that it is about the ratings and it's not about really about the person because. But I have never ever. But by the way, one thing I have I have never ever conceded. Can you hear me? Sometimes. Are you just ignoring me? I'm not clear on that. Um. The fact is, though, that I've never, ever uh, said that my desire to get ratings means I would say absolutely anything, because I wouldn't. Oh, so you're so you were saying, but you, so if you would say that, I think you do care about the ratings. You really, you, you really. I care about the ratings, I, but I would I never, I would never, oh, ratings. Jesus, this is painful. I would never give somebody the wrong advice to get the ratings up. Uh, if it wouldn't help my ratings, maybe I wouldn't take the call. You're a businessman. You're doing it for your business. Every everybody's in business, including you. Exactly. So is it because of your business, or because you really want to give them the right advice? Decide. Uh I, uh, there's a third possibility that you're not considering, which is by having animated exchanges with callers, it gets ratings regardless of what my advice is. So therefore, I can give them the right advice. That's because you're controversial, and you'll give them advice based on your whole your. But not your, everything your, I say. Your, but not every, wait a minute. Hold on there. You're wrong because everything I say isn't controversial. When I tell guys wear condoms, is that controversial? Oh no, no. That's your. your over Do you there, think you that's going to get ratings? Voice, Do you so? think that's going to get better ratings? That well, yeah. You know what? I'd probably get better ratings by going on the air and telling guys don't use condoms. Ride bareback. Lie. Tell. Give a fake name. That would probably get higher ratings. Yeah, what I'm trying to say, Tom. I'm not talking about that. You're being controversial, and that's good for your ratings. You by you saying you're, you're wearing condoms. Nobody said that you. That's that's not being controversial. You know exactly what I'm talking about. No, but the point is, I could say something much more controversial. Controversial. Yes, you could. But yes, I don't. Could. That's that's an example. I don't. You stay on the limit where you could. I do not give advice strictly uh, for the ratings. I mean, in other words, giving the advice and having the exchange with the caller is what gets the ratings. I don't have to make up bad answers for people in order to get people to listen. Well, I, again, I, I, me personally, I think that your person, how can someone take advice from you when it has to do about your... How can people take advice from anybody on the radio or television for that matter? No, people go to psychologists and they're biased and they like, I mean, they they don't really care. They don't have any ratings and they'll give a real, you oh, know, really? a real decision. Well, they do have ratings. You, you, you pay, you pay them, you pay them $90 an hour. Well, yeah, and, and yeah. if your if your if your analyst tells you you're going to need to come in for the next two years, is that because you need to come in for the next two years, or because they need ninety bucks to throw? No, no, that's because that's they're actually professionals. This is oh, what they do. oh, they would never do something like that. How about a divorce attorney? When a divorce attorney takes a year to do a divorce that should have taken six months, is that because they're doing everything right and professionally, or is that because they want to make more money in billable hours? Because you want to do more, become more money. Oh, so you're saying an attorney's advice then, even though they're professionals, an attorney's advice can't be trusted. I think a lot of times you have to stay on top of them. I think you have to stay on top on, of everybody who gives advice. And I think that's what the bottom line is here. But everybody's got a vested interest. Everybody. Everybody. Including the priest you confess to, because he wants you to come to church on Sunday after you confess on Saturday. Everybody has a vested interest. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's Mike on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, how are you? Doing okay. Hey, first time caller. And listen, I just want to congratulate you on Life After Stern. I sold uh, radio advertising in Boston for a big station that uh, Howard was on, and I left and went to the major competitor, and still made you know um, a good living at it. And uh, so I can really understand. And I don't think you're controversial at all. I think you you hit it right on the head with everything. Well, thank you for that. I were, as you may know, I worked in Boston in radio for a year. In fact, yeah. I worked right across the street from the station you work for. Yeah, I was there from uh, ninety three to two thousand one. Well, you and I overlapped because I was there from ninety three to ninety four, and I worked at WRKO, which was down the block from WBCN. I, I know exactly yeah. where you were. Yep, I know RKO. I was at. Uh, I also went to work for AAF. 
W A A F. Yeah, with Opie and Anthony. So I know I'm very familiar with controversial radio, and you know I think that Howard got a little, you know, kind of stupid sometimes with the little jokes he would do, and Opie and Anthony did some crank stuff. But you know, you you your advice is always right on. You know, you don't make it up, and I, I truly believe in that. So I think you're doing a great job, and I just want to say congratulations. Mike, thank you for the call. This is Casey on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. I am a very big fan, and my question is, I was wondering if there a specific Law & Order episode was based after you. Um, I, I was uh, Law and Order SVU. Uh, there was an episode. Of course, they'll never admit that because they don't want to pay me. Um, but there was an episode that uh, I believe was based on our show. Yes. Okay, because you're my favorite. I think you're just so sexy. And also on the on the show, I, I said this has to be Tom. So thank you so much for answering that. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the call. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom David on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hi, Tom. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Question about the show is regarding takeouts at the end of a call. What is the most takeouts a caller has ever requested? Well, they've requested a lot. Uh, the question is not what's the most they've ever requested. The question is what, what's the most we've ever done, and I think it's four. Four. Awesome. Well, we don't like to encourage it because then we'll be spending the whole day playing sound effects. I, I, I understand. <laughs> uh, could you take me out with three? What are they? Squeaky mattress with the girl's voice, an orgasm, and Compton style. Let's see what we got for you, David. Oh. 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 Oh, God. Oh. Yes. 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 Bitch. It's Scott on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, first of all, big congrats not only to you, but also to Dino and Gary Zabransky and all your supporting cast. Uh, my question, whatever happened to Hot Tub Amy? Well, Hot Tub Amy lives in Seattle, and as you may or may not know, we spent 11 very successful years on the radio in Seattle. Right up until the last month we were on live, we were the number one show in the afternoon in Seattle. And then the radio station uh, changed format. And when the radio station changed format, we got moved to a sister station that plays music. And that meant we got dumped at 10 o'clock at night. And so uh, Amy uh, can't be on live with us because there's no live Flash Friday in Seattle anymore. Ah, uh, it's a shame. She was a good caller. <laughs> and I understand the station in Seattle now isn't even running our show on Fridays. And so, um, you know, we... We're on the air. We're professionals about it. But that's what happened. I mean, Hot Tub used to be on live from the freeways of Seattle, and it's kind of difficult to do when our show isn't heard on Fridays in Seattle anymore. All right. Well, keep up the good work. Thanks for all you do. Scott, thank you. Stephen on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Uh, this is uh, Stephen. I'm from Uganda, Africa, and I've been listening to you for about four years. Yes. I think you're great. You're one of the biggest entertainers, and uh, I just love the way you put people in their places. People don't people, people here don't realize that your IQ is simply one of the best around, and I think some of us are really blessed to get uh, your, your advice and everything. Well, and thank you I for think, that. <laughs> yeah, and I think uh, people better be advised to you know listen to you like this guy was calling who called you about two or three calls earlier. I think it's just a moron. I think there's so much advice that you give people about investments and everything, and uh, it's only good for, you know, people to listen to and take to heart. Yes, absolutely. Yes, so uh, please take me out, Great White Style, if you still have it. Great White Style. You are a long-time listener, Stephen. Here you go. Just as tasteless as ever. Tell you what. All right, our email address is my name. Write to me. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. That's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.